the CDC shuttlecock buzzer and the reason we use this fly is um, it's particularly a fly that we use a lot for uh, English uh, lake fishing uh, but it's where um, where you're trying to imitate uh, the minch swimming up from the weed beds uh, breaking through the surface where they get stuck uh, before hatching out into the adult minch and the reason we like to capture this emerger stage uh, is because the trout hone in on it it's an easy meal for them uh, and it's terrific fishing too so here we have a, a simple curved hook on a standard wire um, shank. Uh, this one is a partridge K4AY, um, but most uh, shrimp or um, sort of caddis shaped hooks will do a similar job. And I like a slight curve because it looks like the fly trying to break through the surface. Um, for our thread, um, very simple black thread. Uh, this is a Semperfly 12O uh, wax thread. Uh, I like 12O. It's a, got enough thickness on it that it will um, that it will help us produce a body for this particular fly. And the way we start, just back from the eye, wrap it over the hook, and take a few turns to lock everything in place. Now we're everything's locked in. We're in control. What I like to do now is take the thread i don't cut off the tag end yet um, because i want to generate touching turns and by keeping that tag end it allows me to control the thread going down the shank of the hook run that all the way down once i get towards the final part of the bend um, i will take that tag end off don't want it showing and I will tidy up that point and now I'm going to do touching turns back try not to catch the point of the hook there so this is lying the initial basis of our body and then I'm going to get our rib material which here it is a bear with me. Here we're using a holographic pearl um, pearl miler, and this is quite small in diameter. Uh, this is one sixty-four of an inch, and the reason I'm using this is I don't want to take away from the black body by using a solid color rib um, but I just want to enhance it by adding something interesting to the fly so we tie that in at the top end here and wherever you tie it in try and hold it in that position all the way back and work your thread back down so you'll notice that those original two layers of thread body combined with the third layer and soon to be fourth will generate a decent body thickness put that out the way and touching turns on the way back Just hiding any of that holographic And now we can work our rib material forward. So with that first turn, anchor it in and then just pop your finger on top of it to hold it in place. Hope that that doesn't get caught. And the same again. Otherwise you can find it will sometimes slip. Which of course we don't want. Take it forward, nice open turns. Talking about it slipping, there we go. Right. And then lock it off, two turns over the top, two in front, oh, three. Um, and that's it there, all locked off in place. And we'll just take our scissors and trim that out there. Probably with holographic is it sticks to everything. Um, right. 
Now I'm going to lay a little thread base there and we're going to add in obviously the most important material of the evening, the CDC. You'll find that it comes in various bag sizes. I always try and get the biggest ones because I go through so much CDC through the course of the season. And here with the shuttlecock, what we want is to make sure that we get quite a lot of buoyancy. So here I've selected three feathers which should do the job perfectly. Um, they're all pretty uniform and I'm trying to max the tips up. So I have the feathers all facing the same direction and all curved down on top of each other rather than pairing them against each other which would create a dome. Uh, I want them all to lie flush with each other. Once they're paired up, hold the stems, trap them and stroke the fibres forward. Use the natural moisture in your fingers to allow that to take shape. And then once that's there, so now we're going to look to create roughly the same length as the body as the wing. We do that by trapping the feathers on top and taking the thread up over the CDC, forming a loop and sliding it down on top. Keeping the thread pressure on, place a few more locking turns on. Just with good pressure, we don't want to let that CDC wrap round. Taking a couple of turns in front to help lock that and stop it from going anywhere. You can also do round the back. I try not to do too many round the back uh, because that will kick everything up and create it and make it a little bit too bulky. Then go in with your scissors and just neatly just trim away. I do this with a few cuts just to make sure I'm getting in there and cutting everything out. And you'll see that's facing forwards now. And that's our shuttlecock appearance. So nice and um, expansive forwards. And that's our indicator of where the fly is on the water. And the rest of the body, this black thread bit, is the bit that will sit underneath the surface in the fish's realm and hopefully be the bit that makes it look appealing to any passing by. When midges hatch out, particularly our larger lake midges, um, their wing buds, the area just around here where you've got the thick thorax, uh, quite often has a, a sort of orange haemoglobin glow about it just before the wings explode out. So always like to add that touch in. Here's just a bit of orange CDC dubbing and we're just going to put a couple of turns of that in. First as a little hot spot and then a simple hair's ear natural dubbing. You'll notice that this is quite a popular dubbing for a lot of thorax is in my dries. And I've just taken a little pinch of it I'm just going to press it to the thread and spin it round. You want some tighter bit, some looser bit, so you get that leggy, bushy bit. And now you're looking to keep a uniform thickness and hide any of that black thread that was showing through that area. Once you're at the front, fold the wing back and put a few turns in front. Essentially you want to create like a dam, just a, an area that pushes that wing up. So stroking it back, a few turns there, lengthen it off and in with the whip finish tool. So fold that back round once, twice, three times, unhook it off and once again. again some of you won't like to use a whip finish tool. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Just a finger hand whip finish is fine. Or just a half hitch tool. Uh, they all do a similar job. Um, now that's all locked off. 
Just open your scissors into a V-shape, push it against the thread, and out. And there you have it, the shuttlecock buzzer. I'll just change that angle slightly in the vise. So that's how we would expect it to sit in the water. So the water would be roughly the eye of the hook there. The wing would be exploding above the surface of the water. This would be sat underneath. A tasty meal for, for any passing fish. And particularly good uh, for our spring springtime reservoir fishing in the UK.